Hi, and welcome to my guide of the quest Heart of Darkness. The quest requirement is Twilight's Promise, and the stat requirements are 46 Agility, 48 Slayer and Thieving, as well as 55 Mining. None of these stats are boostable. I just need it. Simply 30 coins. For the recommendations is 1. Stamina Potion, as well as some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill some demi-bosses of combat 167 and 263. The first one is weak to everything, and the final boss is weak to crush and fire spells. Though, if your stats are base 70s or higher, then a Dragon Scimitar or a Zombie Axe is also fine. Then also, if you did some Hunter Rumors and you happen to have 10 Quetzal Feed, fuck, I don't have it, and you want to unlock the new Quetzal Landing Site, then make sure to grab 10 Quetzal Feed, a hammer and a saw, as well as 3 limestone bricks and 4 soft clay. Either bring this amount of stuff or 5 empty inventory slots. For teleports is 1 teleport to Fortis, as well as 1 teleport away after the quest is completed. Where to start this quest is here where we've ended the Twilight's Promise quest on Rylo's Rise. You can easily get here by using a Quetzal that we've built during that quest, I think. Here in the church, let's first charge our prayer and talk to the prince. And let's select option 1 to start this quest. And this will also trigger a relatively short cutscene, but we're also going to be talking quite a lot next, so I'm going to be pressing space with my phone. Once the cutscene is over, let's make our way west and go to the Quetzal at the transportation sign. Let's use it and make our way northeast. You can also do this by foot by following the mountain path, but just go a little bit northeast and select the gorge. Once we have arrived, let's go a little bit west into the pub. In there, let's talk to the bartender and select option 2 and then 1 that you'd like to rent a basement room, and then you will rent the room just east, since there is no basement room, and then click on the bed to rest. Then, keep pressing space, as the prince will wake you up and talk to you. After the prince is done talking, we will need to talk to the shopkeeper across the road, next to the Quetzal that is marked with the general store sign. Don't select any options, open the door to the general store and talk to the shopkeeper. Let's select option 2. I hear that you offer to help those in need. Once this conversation is over, we will need to make our way back to the prince, who is still located in the pub. After we have spoken to the prince, we must go to the bank to prepare for the battles of this quest. The bank here in the gorge is the closest that we're gonna be getting. So go to the bank now, grab some food, armor, weapon and potions for the following boss fights. The first one is pretty easy and is weak to all styles. And the second one is weak to crush and fire spells. If you happen to find some Quetzal Seed in your bank, then make sure to grab these items as well. Make sure that you have at least five empty inventory slots and maybe also one teleport to Fortis before continuing this quest, as there will be no more banks in the neighborhood, and this will be the closest one. Once we're ready, let's go north to the big gate, just a bit northeast, click on it to go through. Next, continue northeast until the path goes east. Then follow the path and keep going east until you see a source of a river and a fishing sign.
All right, here at the source of the river, just a bit south, there is the fishing sign. And from this point, if you have the Quetzal feed, then it's time to build that stuff. If you're not going to be building that new landing site, then you can skip this part. For those that do want to build it, let's go north in the small valley and let's go to the overlook. Let's go north, enter the overlook and go to the northwestern corner. Just northwest of the furnace and the general store, let's build this landing site. Once this has been built, let's make our way back to the river source and the fishing sign to meet up with the ones that did not build this. Let's continue southeast. And southeast we'll find a dungeon sign and a tower. Just in front of the tower entrance, next to the most southern tree, they'll find the prince. Let's talk to him and skip through the conversation until you see some options. We don't need to select anything. And next we'll need to talk to the other recruits. These are Nova, Sergius, Pelias and Carita. Let's right click on all of these NPCs and try to find these four NPCs. Various. Sergius, Carita, and now just once again, Nova is always most difficult to find. And Nova, the guy in pink. Next, if you have a pet on you, then make sure that you call your pet and pick it up. For the next part, you cannot use it. Let's talk to the prince and select option 2. How so? And after this conversation is over, let's head into the tower, just west, and talk to the NPC inside, forebearer Janus. And by talking to her with the prince following us, this will start trial 1 out of 4 if we just climb up the staircase. Just a bit northwest in the cage area, you will find the Emissary Ascendant. Right click and pickpocket to get a key. Then go southeast and use the key on the gate. To unlock it, click to continue and search the chest to find a book and a scrap of paper. Open the book and you'll see that four random words are highlighted. What I suggest you to do is first press enter and then write the first letter of every highlighted word in your chat box. If you play mobile, then maybe grab a pen and paper or just type it and enter. Once you have written down this four letter word or name, close the book and open the gate and then go southwest to open the chest and insert that name into the lock. Click to confirm. If you like inventory space, then you can destroy the book and open the chest. Next, read the poem and you will see four more highlighted words. These ones are the same for everyone, but these are in a random order for everyone. If the first letter equals S, that means left. If the first letter is U, that means down. If the first letter is M, that means up. And if the first letter equals T, that means right. Write down your directions moving from top to bottom. Once you know the four directions, close the scroll, maybe destroy the poem and get at least four empty inventory slots and go back into the gated area northwest and open that chest. And then click on those four directions. And confirm. This will open the chest and I use the pieces on each other to make a complete note. Read the note for three random words. These three words we will need to remember. But I think it is easier to just remember the first letter of every word. Though there are multiple words that start with the letter K as well as I. 
So maybe remembering the whole word or just the first two letters would be advised. Once you've remembered these three words, close the scroll and go to the northeastern corner to talk to Janice and select option one. And let's recite these three words that we've just remembered. Once you've passed the first trial, let's select option one to continue with the next one. This is a combat trial. Make sure that you have five empty inventory slots and let's make our way to the eastern side and right click and take many of the medical box. One box contains five bandages. These will need to heal yourself as well as the prince. To be able to make these bandages heal the prince during the fight, just simply click on the prince to heal. Second, if you use the high definition plugin for settings, then make sure to turn these off right now as this will make it very difficult to see what tiles we are not supposed to stand on during the special attacks. And that is it. Let's go northeast, talk to Janice to start the combat trial. Let's fight every emissary here in like five waves or so to complete this trial. Now from wave three and onward, the brawlers or the melee users will be able to do a AoE attack. Make sure to not stand on the tiles that have shadows on them. From wave 4 and onward, there will be some mages. Watch out for those. Use Protect for Magic if you use melee armor. Simply use Protect for Magic and focus on the brawlers that can use AoE attacks. Do all of this, all the while heal the prince and yourself whenever is needed. On the final wave, you and the prince will both get one brawler and one mage. Try to defeat your brawler as fast as possible and then make your way close to the prince. If you do not, then either the prince might end up dying or you will have two AoE attacks to pay attention to. If you run out of bandages, then you can go to the medical box, grab some more and then return to the prince to help him heal. Once trial 2 has been completed, use the remaining bandages on yourself before they get destroyed and let's talk northeast 2 for Banner Jarrus and select option 1 
to start trial 3 out of 4. This one is a pretty simple one. Let's first talk to the prince. And afterwards, we'll need to talk to the four standing NPCs. Talk to all of them and select option 3. Tell me about the final dawn. And then read what they say. One of them will mention Mictal. After you've asked all the four NPCs about the final dawn, then you will need to right click on the NPC that mentions Mictal and select choose. This will get him executed. If you fail, that is no problem, there's no penalty, just right click and choose someone else and try again. and their life will end swiftly. Next, it is time for the fourth and the final trial, which is defeating the prince. The prince will only use melee, with a max hit of 12, though the prince is immune to special attacks. The prince will also notify you when he's about to do a special attack. When he does, immediately move behind him. There are two special attacks, one that does AoE damage, the second special of the prince is that he does an AGS pack that does damage if you use prayers. Just tank that damage to be honest. I don't know what the max hit is of the prince's special attack, but it can hit up to 16. I've seen that on myself. So just use protect from melee and whenever he says something just move behind him. And that's about it. Once you have defeated the prince, let's talk to Janice, and she will take us to the bottom of the tower. Let's continue the conversation with the prince, and then afterwards talk to full bearer Janus, and this will unlock the southwestern chest. Open it to find the full set of... to find a full emissary outfit. Next, let's head east until we see a church. Let's enter the church, but to be able to enter the church, we must equip the four pieces of the Emissary Rope Set. Entering this building will also trigger a cutscene. Once again, use your phone on the spacebar or keep pressing space until the conversation with the king after the cutscene is over. Next, after speaking to the prince, let's remove our phone from the spacebar and talk to the guy behind him, Forbearer Fides. And after talking to Fides, I'm quickly going behind this wooden preachy structure and pray at the Shrine of Twilight. Next, let's exit the temple and go south to the dungeon sign. Let's climb down the stairs into the new Slayer dungeon. Let's continue the conversation with the prince and then next to us we'll find a barrel with a pickaxe. Take the pickaxe and then mine the rocks on the other side of the staircase to unlock this Slayer dungeon. This will also trigger a cutscene. After this cutscene is over, the prince will also be knocked back to the boss room. 
So from this point forward, if you have a pet on you, you can drop it if you like. And what we also can drop after this cutscene is over is the pickaxe as well as the emissary rope set. You don't really need it for the remainder of this quest. The prince is gone now, so if you have a pet, then you can drop it right now. Next, we can also drop our bronze pickaxe. Let's turn on Protect from Magic and run south. If you don't have Protect from Magic, then that's also no problem. Next, pause the moving wall spikes. And once you've passed these, you can turn off your Protect from Magic and attached to the southern wall, you'll find the first lever out of four. Pull it, click the continue, and then further east, climb down the ledge. Next, let's continue eastward, and then go around, passing some frost scraps, and do not ever stand on the floor spikes. Just try to avoid these, and continue going north until you see an ice ledge. Slide along. And once we've crossed it, let's enter the northeastern room, but once again, watch out for the floor spike trap, and then pull the lever. Then once again, pause this floor spiky trap and then continue westward to the icy pillar platforms we've already pulled lever two out of four to unlock the boss room climb down the ledge just west and continue westward once again watch out for the floor spiky trap and attached to the northern wall let's pull the third lever Watch out for the floor trap and continue south. Make your way south until you see a giant gate. Just north of this gate, there is the final lever. Pull it and this will do a fade to black, removing this wall section. Next, go a bit east and there will find a chain. Pull it to open a shortcut from the entrance of the icy dungeon to the bottom, which is going to be helpful if you want to resupply before the boss fight at the end of the quest, as well as post quest if you want to fight Frost Nagia or the new boss. Next, let's enter west into the western room. In here, let's go south and you'll find the earth markings. Inspect it. And once again, this will be random for everyone. What we will need to do is write down in our chat box the first letter of the Earth markings. Enter Earth equals random letter. Next, let's go north and do the same with the air markings. So for me, air equals random letter. Next, we're going to be attacked by some Frost Nagwas. Use Protect from Magic at all times and also, while getting attacked, do not spend any attention on the special attacks. Just try to not stand on the same tile for too long while you're getting attacked. That whenever you're standing on an icy tile that they spawn, that will deal damage and that amount of damage gets reducted from your prayer points. So, let's get ready to get attacked. Use Protect from Magic and start searching all the urns. And once you've done that, head south to the earth urns and do the same thing. Search every urn for the final third icon. Once you have your three icons, you can move westward to the western part of this room. The icons that you're getting are also random colors. Three of the four elemental colors. Once you have three, you are done. If you do not have the three icons yet, they can also search the urns on the western side on the other side of the room. Next, let's search 
the water markings as well. That is a random letter. So water equals random letter. And on the northwestern marking, the fire one is also random letter. So fire equals... Uh, what was it again? That one. Remember to stay moving while getting attacked by these crusties, else your prayer points will be drained. The northern one is air. Use the white icon on it. The second northern is earth. Use the yellow icon on it. Then it is the fire one. Use the orange one. And then use the blue icon on the last, the most southern one. And finally, to open the boss room door, we will need to touch these statues in a random order. And the order is the one that we have written in the chat box. First, we will need to touch the one that has the letter Z or Z. Touch that statue. Next, we need to touch the letter O. So what statue was O? That was this one. Next, it is the letter Y, that is third. And finally, the letter N is the final one. Oh, that is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong, I think. Oh no, that's correct, I'm just stupid. Anyway, once the door to the boss room is unlocked, we can defeat the boss and complete our quest. If you think you lack supplies to defeat this boss, then first go east and pull the chain, then teleport away and go to the bank. Then take the Quetzal back to the gorge or the overlook to make your way back to the icy dungeon and then go down the chain to go back to this room. Once you think you are ready, pass through the door. For the entire duration of this boss fight, use Protect from Magic. The boss also has three special attacks. The first and the most common one is the ice spike attack that comes from the floor. Just avoid the marked tiles on the floor to avoid that attack. Second, the boss will also mark a tile with a blue icy circle and if you stand on it, you will take constant damage. Third, the boss will turn off your prayers and fire an icicle at you. Quickly turn on your protect from magic again to negate that damage. And a fourth and a final special attack, the boss will spawn some unstable ice. Destroy these as fast as possible. And that is it. Defeat the boss and complete your quest. All right, I think that's done. Once you have defeated the boss, oh, that's not a player. You are teleported away back to uh, Nowhere's Land. Let's teleport back to Fortis. And let's move north into the palace to go north of the small inner garden. And on the carpet, we'll find Servius Tekan Rallos. Uh, let's talk to him to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed the Heart of Darkness quest you are awarded with. Two quest points, 8,000 Mining, Thieving, Slayer and Agility experience, as well as access to the new Slayer dungeon. And this new dungeon most notably contains Frost Crabs, which are the same as Sand Crabs, Moonlight Moths, two Runite Rocks, 
Frost Nagua and the new boss, which is the same one that we have just defeated in this quest. Both the Frost Nagua and the new boss drop a Pendant of Atis, as well as Frozen Tears that can charge that new Pendant. You can use one charge of this new Pendant to teleport you to Dark Frost, the Twilight Temple that is pretty close to the new Slayer Dungeon, to Rylo's Rise, which is close to the exposed altar, so you can more quickly bless your bones and wine, and finally can also teleport you to the port of Alderin, though you must first complete the quest on that island called the Death on the Isle. And this is my guide how to complete the Heart of Darkness quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. It is storable. Nice. And this will start trial one out of four. Fuck, cunt. Bitch, come here. I don't have attack options on. Fucking BA. Ow, bitch. Yeah, not like me then. At the end, they'll find a ledge that you can climb down. Do so. Once again, watch out for the floor spikes, walk around them. God damn it, fun of a bit! Final one to open this gate. Why is it not open? There's another lever here. God damn it. If you lack inventory space, then you can probably destroy this rope set. I'm gonna destroy it. God damn it, cunt. Piece of shit! Stay away, you cons, the son of a bitch. Destroy. Let's search the urns for the fourth and the final icon. Are you serious? Do you need the fucking outfit to get the icon? The statue is... It's already on there. Are you fucking serious? You don't need the outfit. Fuck. Oh, bitch. I just got drained 15 prayers. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Use your XP lamp on a hunter.